All right, we've done the goalkeepers. Obviously, some shock and awe with those selections. Let's go to the defenders now, Heath Pierce. Cameron Carter-Vickers, center back, not a big surprise. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, in certain matchups, certain situations, certain teams we're playing against, he could be the yeah, right guy fine. We play. predicted that. We won yeah, it. No problem. We won it. Serginho Dest are starting right back. No big yep. surprise there. We just got to make sure he's healthy. You have Aaron Long, who is, it seems like, at 30 years old. This is it. This is going to be his last hurrah at the World Cup level. But, mm -hmm. but hadn't really been playing well since coming back from an Achilles injury, but seemed to have been given every opportunity to not make the team. Or well, to make the I don't team. think anybody and, and, took his spot either. Nobody went out there. That's and took fair. His spot. That's fair. Yeah. So I mean, he even hung if you're a veteran, enough. even if you're a veteran, Jimmy, if someone's not going to come out there, whether that's uh, Eric Palmer Brown or Mark McKenzie, yes, they both had solid outings at times, but neither of them really said, "I'm going to take this guy out," who obviously has the trust of the coach. So while form is a thing, I also think nobody really came and snatched it from him. No, that's true. And for everybody joining us on CBS Sports HQ, what's up? Great to see you. We're talking about the defensive part of this U.S. Men's National Team that's going to the World Cup. There are some surprises, mainly Shaq Moore, who mm -hmm. played in the Spanish Second Division last season. Now he plays for Nashville and MLS. A bit surprised with this one. I thought that maybe Reggie Cannon would get the nod over him, given his experience and, and that he's actually played with the U.S. in the last six friendlies. Mm -hmm. Whereas Shaq Moore, I don't think, has been a part of the team for quite some time. I like Shaq Moore. And when he fell out of the equation, I would just kind of stop talking about him because if they didn't want to rate him or give him a chance, then then I just assume they're, they've moved on past him. But there he is. And what I do like about him, if we're looking for little chemistry things, and if we do want to start him at right back or at least bring him in at any point, he plays with Walker Zimmerman, who should start for us in the back line, who also oh, plays man. for Nashville. Now it's like, now we're I'm talking about Rodon and Morris making the team because they're best friends, Jimmy, like because they text each other at night. I mean, I get, I get the rhythm of it. But where was but, but, Shaq Moore up I, until this okay, last Okay, I get it. I'm just trying to look at the silver linings. But I go, okay, keep going, keep going. No, no, I'm, what I'm saying is where was Shaq Moore up until this last camp, right? Look how many right backs we're bringing to this. Yes, Joe Scali can play on the left. Yes, Serginho Desk can cover on the left. But where, where, like, what is the purpose behind this? Was it because he got called into the MLS only camp or the guys that were out of season and impressed in that time where Greg Berhalter got this gut feeling of, man, I can trust this guy? Because clearly Greg hadn't trusted him uh, prior. We had a depth chart of Serginho Dest when he's not available, DeAndre Yedlin when he's not available, Reggie Cannon. And Cannon could also play a little bit of center back. You and can. then you have Shaq Moore. And so. That's Dude, another shot. I would go Joe Scally. Yeah. We had Joe Scally before we had Shaq Joe Moore. Scally, exactly. Sha Joe Scally was potentially, we were talking about him with Yedlin of like, maybe he can slide in. Maybe it's too late. But now you've got Shaq Moore. What is it you're like? Do you think that there's just, we're going to play with five right backs? Again, this is a question for Greg Berhalter. You've had all of this time. We've, we've capped so many players. We've gotten so many players, good looks developed. So many players over this time. Shaq Moore, it must be a gut instinct or must have been impressed so much in this camp. And I'm not saying he didn't have a good season, but he clearly wasn't part of it. And you can't tell me a guy like that who I think has around 12 or 15 caps or whatever. Greg Hatt was like, oh yeah, I get this player. I don't need to bring him in because I know what he's capable of. That's just, to me, uh, that's one of those variables where I'm just like, does it make sense? And I'm not saying there's another player should have gone. I, I think that's too many right backs, period. But that means if you're going to take that many right backs, whether it was Reggie Cannon or Shaq Moore, you are sacrificing somewhere else on the field of your 26 players. And so that to me was a little bit of an odd one. I'll say this about Shaq Moore. I would, or let me, let me, let me take a step back. When I look at our five right backs, there's two that you mentioned in Scally and Des that can play at the left side. And we don't have any cover for Anthony Robinson on the left side. So one of them, if Anthony gets hurt, uh, Tim Ream now, over. Tim Ream now, by the Tim way, Ream could, could, could do a little play bit of left back. But, but even he would raise his hand and say he prefers to play in the middle than out. Oh, yeah, of course. Isolated. But, yeah, but of course. he has played left back. He's sure. spent early and, days at left back. Yeah. And he's our only other left footer. So we have two left footed players. In our defense, <laughs> that's Tim Ream, who plays center back. And we have Anthony Robinson, who plays left back. Thankfully, if we're looking at the chemistry vibes again, they both play for Fulham, and they've both been playing pretty well. Despite that I will give you. Open. That I will give you, Jimmy. Okay, I'll give you that chemistry I'm just one. saying. Yeah. Okay, fine. But we don't get to make Shaq a Moore, team because of that. Listen, Shaq Moore. Yeah. I like – he's got more similarities, I think, to Serginho Dest than maybe yeah. anybody else. I think he can get forward. I think he's he can explosive. whip in a good cross. Tactical. He's explosive. I think yep. that uh, – he could he can he could probably unbalance a team. I'm assuming this is if he gets in. But for me, this is the biggest surprise for sure. We have the big surprise of Zach Steffen not being part of the goalkeepers, which is crazy to me that he's not in. I'm still trying to process what that means to me, going through an emotional spell at the moment, just thinking about it. We haven't even got to Ricardo Pepe yet. And then Shaq Moore is the biggest surprise for me in this collection of players. But 
because for everybody that doesn't know, they've expanded the World Cup rosters from normally 23, historically 23 to 26. We got three guys we can throw out there for the vibes. So maybe he's the vibes guy. And if he gets to yeah. play, maybe he proves his worth. I will raise my hand that when I played in the World Cup in 2006, I'm pretty sure I got selected for my vibes. I got fun energy. <laughs> I'm a you good played, hard worker. Though. You played. It's not I like you're a, you're a locker room guy. I, I started as a locker room guy. I ended up getting to play and prove myself, which was great. And I'm glad that I had that opportunity and that the coaching staff trusted me to go out there in a big moment and, yeah. and uh, prove their confidence in me. But I probably started as a vibes guy. So, so... I'm not going to discount any vibes, guys, but because they expanded the roster, I think Shaq Moore right now Jimmy. is just going to be a passenger for Jimmy. this. He's got great tickets Jimmy. to the World Cup. What? He's, 20, he's not like he's like 18 or something. He's 24 years old <laughs> just, or 26, just, maybe. He I think, could. He could be but, part of 2026. Look, I get Haji, it. right? Haji, right? That's the gut instinct. You go back to 2010, right? We talked about Hercules Gomez, Edson Buttle. Like, these are guys where gut instinct, when so, I get that feeling and I'm on the sideline and I'm Greg Berhalter and I'm pacing okay, back in my okay. technical area and we are down a goal and I go, who can I, who over there has got that magic touch right now that they believe that they can score in any moment in any game? That's your Haji right. I will give you that. Now, I completely disagree that Ricardo Pepe uh, so, uh, so, shouldn't have been left off, but that's your guy. At least you can go on form okay, and say, okay. that's, that's the one I throw in the mixer for the Hail Mary. Okay, so but but I think to your point and where we should explore for everybody watching – Make sure you hit us up in the comments if you're watching on YouTube or uh, drop us a hit on Twitter at ISWT Pod. Drop us a follow too. We'd love that. What I'll say is, I think what I'm picking up from what you're putting down, the underlying message is why not just leave Shaq Moore at home and bring a Ricardo Pepe, right? Because if you're going to sacrifice a spot, we don't necessarily need a Shaq Moore. We've got that covered because we've got now five mm -hmm. right backs and bring somebody that has proven that. It feels like to me, when I think about the Ricardo Pepe, situation and him not being included which we're going to get into a little bit more and you think about zach stefan not being included from a goalkeeper it's like it's like greg knew he was listen listen it Jimmy, like this it, isn't about shaq moore it's not about shaq moore though it's about the fact that we have he is number four in our current world cup roster for right back i position. get it I, so, that so we is what you get another striker for? It's not, I get it. I, I'm, I'm super stoked for Shaq Moore. I'm so proud of the work that he's put in and the player that he's become sure, of course but do you need four right backs? no Jimmy? you don't and do, that's do you what feel like, about. okay, let me know. We'll, 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 let me rephrase it because we're using Shaq Moore as a symbol here for, for the conversation we want to have. And I believe when I look at some of these decisions that Greg has made, it just feels like he was trying to save himself for having to make tough decisions in tournament. Because what if Matt Turner has an absolute stinker against Wales as our number one? You would most likely go to Zach Steffen against, against England. But instead, you just rule out that possibility. Okay, Ricardo Pepe doesn't start. But there's going to be this clamoring for. I, I don't understand why these two guys in particular are not on the team. It just it really blows my mind. Yeah. And and it just I, I'm trying to under maybe there's a backstory. I'm hearing that Ricardo Pepe might have had an injury or whatever. There's going to have to be something because I just don't understand it. Just for at face value, I, I really don't.